On June 10, 1882, three black men, Isaac King, George Robertson, and Peter Vinegar were lynched at this site by a mob of at least 100 white men. Mr. King and Mr. Robertson were living temporarily with the Vinegar family when they discovered a white man assaulting Mr. Vinegar's 14-year-old daughter, Margaret, and they came to her defense. The three were later arrested after the white man's body was found in the river. On June 10th, a large white mob surrounded the jail and drug the three men from the jail to the middle of the Kansas River Bridge, where nooses were placed around their necks and they were thrown over the side of the bridge. These blue markers are all over the place and they are part of a community remembrance project. Lawrence, Kansas is known for being the abolitionist stronghold during the bleeding Kansas era, but that didn't mean that they felt African Americans were equal and this sign proves it. And this is just one of the many interesting things that we're gonna see today. We are off on another adventure today and I really don't have anything planned. I'm just getting in the car and I'm just gonna go see what I can see. And it should be pretty interesting. We're gonna to head towards Lawrence, Kansas. And that is um, that was an abolitionist stronghold during the bleeding Kansas era. I have no doubt that we're gonna find something interesting up there. I cannot wait. And it is so spooky today. I mean, you guys, it is foggy and just creepy out. I just am loving this. Well, we have made it to downtown Lawrence, Kansas, the home of the Jayhawks and the University of Kansas and my alma mater. And I ended up spending most of the day walking around downtown Lawrence. Lawrence's downtown is full of restaurants and breweries and shops and architecture and history. And we're gonna mill around for a bit and see what interesting things we can see, grab some lunch and just enjoy the day. Lawrence was founded in 1854 by a group from the New England Aid Society, and that was a group of abolitionists that came into the Kansas Territory to ensure that the state would be admitted to the Union as a free state. And a lot happened in this town, both before and during the Civil War. Most notably was Quantrell's raid in 1863 that resulted in the destruction of Lawrence and the deaths of 150 citizens. This town has been burned twice, but Lawrence rose from the ashes and has become an incredibly quaint college town. And I will go as far as to say that the Civil War really began in and around this town. The abolitionists that settled Lawrence and the pro-slavery Missourians clashed over the issue of slavery. But I don't want people to get the idea that these abolitionists felt like African Americans were equal. They did not. Once Kansas was admitted as a free state, these abolitionists did not want to live side by side with those that they had freed. As a matter of fact, in one of the constitutions, and there were four, Kansas was going to forbade any African American person from living in the state at all. Well, enough of that nastiness. It was pretty cloudy when I got here, but then just like that, the sun came out. This is the Granada Theater, and it was originally built in 1930s as a movie theater. And this is Liberty Hall. It was built in 1911, but in 1856, Kansas's first abolitionist newspaper, the Herald of Freedom, occupied this site. During the sack of Lawrence, pro-slavery Douglas County Sheriff Samuel Jones burned the Herald to the ground, and the structure was rebuilt that same year, and that became a gathering spot for debates, town meetings, and political speeches. In 1882, it became an opera house. In 19 in 11, a fire destroyed the building and the opera house was completely rebuilt in a bow art style and the new theater began to show silent films. The first movie with sound was The Canary Murder Case and that played in 1928. This is the Eldridge House Hotel and it was built in 1925. But originally on this site stood the Free State Hotel that was built by the New England Immigrant Aid Company. And we're gonna go take a quick peek inside the lobby of this hotel. On May 21st, 1856, a large group of pro-slavery men arrived in Lawrence and burned down the Free State Hotel as a part of the Sack of Lawrence. The city built a new hotel, but it too was burned to the ground on August 21st, 1863, when Confederate leader William Quantrell and his raiders burned the hotel along with the city to the ground. 
and this hotel is reputed to be haunted. The story goes that the builder, Shalor Eldridge, still haunts this hotel, and they claim that because the original cornerstone is located in room 506, his spirit manifests in that room, and others claim that the hotel's elevator is haunted by a spirit. This photograph was taken during the 1980s, and it supposedly shows a ghost in the elevator. I don't know, what do you guys think? If you want to stay in this hotel, it will run you about $250 a night. And I will say that this is a very, very pretty hotel. There are two restaurants here. This is the Eldridge House Grill, and it's a bit upscale. And the other one, well, it's more of a casual dining slash bar. And there are so many bars and restaurants in this town. It's kind of crazy. Okay, so this is the Grand Lodge. Constructed in 1910, Egyptian Revival style. Oh yeah, look at this sucker. Oh. Look at that. I think I've seen this kind of architecture, Egyptian revival. I, this is not something you see normally here in Kansas. <laughs> Some repair to that ceiling up there. Still cool as crap. I just think the architecture down here is amazing, but they also have some really interesting stores too. This store is called the Striped Cow, and we're gonna pop in here and see what they have to offer. And of course, as soon as I walk in here, my camera decided to go all fuzzy on me, but I wanted to show you guys this wall of socks. They have so many socks here. I love novelty items like this. I think they are so cool. I'm gonna have to come back here for Christmas and get some of these for my kids. I mean, look, you can have Bill Murray socks. If you need to wear Bill Murray on your feet, there we go. And there were also some other interesting things. I thought that was cool. And I really got a kick out of this cowl. And of course the puzzles. I love puzzles. And I did end up getting one of those puzzles. I got this one, All About Doors. Sister Cities Friendship Garden. And those are the Sister Cities. Wow, it's very pretty. We'll just go in there and just take a look real quick because this is the Watkins Museum of History. And uh, we'll just... Watkins Land Mortgage Company and National Bank. It was erected in 1888. Closed. These places are always closed. Oh, well, what a cute little park. And the sister cities are supposedly all represented here. We'll just, just go this way. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that's supposed to be. All scared. Oh, look at this little trellis. This is beautiful. I love little city parks. You know, we find really cool stuff in city parks. That's cool. I don't know what you call that, a pagoda. I'm not much on uh, Japanese or Chinese or Asian history. And there's something that's been left. I'm sure that's on purpose. Really cool building. Look at this. Oh wow, well. look at those windows. Some crazy windows. Beautiful stained glass windows.
and this is Raven's Bookstore. It was built in 1865 and it was altered in 1912 and it's typical of early 20th century commercial buildings and I'm an avid reader and I absolutely love little bookstores. Every bookstore needs a cat. Yeah. I totally, totally believe that. <laughs> I will take a small bookstore over a big Barnes and Noble any day of the week. And a lot of these stores had these tiled entryways. And again, it's just something that you don't see at the mall or in the new shopping centers that are going up. Well, that's sad. <laughs> that is the courthouse. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go across the street now. This is one very busy flipping city. I'm just gonna tell you. I think school just started back up and there are people everywhere. I tell you what, a lot of uh, courthouses have stuff all around the outside explaining things, but not this courthouse. No, no, it's all business here. It's still cool though. First Park of Lawrence and part of the original town site founded in 1854 originally used as a public area to grow crops and graze livestock for the city's residents. But it's the most historic part of Lawrence, not because it's the oldest park, but also it was the staging site for Quantrell's infamous August 21st, 1863 pre-dawn raid on Lawrence that left over 150 male inhabitants dead and a large portion of Lawrence in ashes. This park is home to the historic Theodore Roosevelt Fountain that was dedicated when he visited Lawrence on Wednesday, August 31st, 1910. The fountain is located near William Kelly Bandstand, which was constructed in 1906 and was built for $600 using donated bricks from a local manufacturer. Imagine that is the building that was built in the 60s because it's ugly. Oh, you guys, I just don't like anything that is built after like 1940. I mean, I live in a brand new house. I can't really say much, but if I had my choice, I would live in a house that was built in the 1860s, 1840s. Some more beautiful Kansas flowers. Ooh, this one is really pretty. Look at that. The pinks, the yellows, the purples. So beautiful. Wow, what a beautiful park. Look at all these flowers. I mean, they're beautiful, magnificent. Like a little English garden. That's what it looks like. I hope you guys are able to hear me because there's so much traffic around here. It's just a little insane. Wow. Look at the flowers. I'm going to take a picture of this because this is what I want for my garden at home. Um, yeah, I'd like a gazebo, but my yard's not big enough. I'm just talking about this color structure that they've got going on here. All the textures, all the colors, the reds, the purples, the whites, the oranges, the yellows. They've incorporated sunflowers. It is so pretty. And there is the bandstand. Okay. and a fountain. Wow, Lawrence has a really good city park. It's called South Park, and this is the bandstand behind us. That was where Theodore Roosevelt came when he visited. And, you know, when you have a president that visits, you got to build a landmark. And that's just what they did with this bandstand. It is kind of pretty, though. I will give you that. I don't know what this is. May peace prevail on earth. And it's written, looks like in all kinds of different languages. Interesting. See, all kinds of different languages. I'm gonna have to stop here pretty quick and get something to eat because I'm kind of hungry, but I'm also overwhelmed. There are so many places to go and get food. I definitely want a beer because this area in Lawrence is known for its breweries. So I would definitely want to go someplace that has its own brewery. I'm sure I can find it. 
So we're gonna head into the Free State Brewery and here is something very interesting about the guy who started this restaurant. His great great grandfather was once the sheriff of Jackson County, Missouri and that is Kansas City, Missouri and not very far from here. And he was one of those tasked to capture Frank and Jesse James in 1869. And his grandfather was arrested and sent to prison during prohibition for selling alcohol. And he had another ancestor who ran a Kansas City saloon. So it just must run in this family's blood. And something that I did learn is that Kansas was one of the last states to repeal prohibition. That didn't happen until 1948. And then if you wanted a drink when you went out to a restaurant, you had to join their private supper club or be a card carrier. The Free State Brewery was opened in 1989 and it has become a Lawrence staple. I ended up trying two beers, the Ad Astra Amber Ale and the Oktoberfest, and they were both good and also had a cheese platter. Oh my goodness, I haven't seen one of these since the last Kmart shut down. Two quarters, that's gone up. And again, I think the architecture is so pretty. That looks like some more Egyptian. And then these windows, these were put in in the 1920s. They're so cool. And then this was a bank. So it's very federal. And I just think it's very interesting looking. And this is the Lawrence Visitor Center. And it's closed. Everything's closed when I show up. Oh, look at this storefront. I just love it. Uh, all right, let's see what this building has to say for itself. Rydendorf and Baker, 1858 to 1888. Bardley Seed Company from 1888 until 1963. One of the first sites rebuilt after Quantrell's raid in 1863. Huh. It's in the Italianate storefront. Yep, I love these storefronts. sun's out now. This place wasn't open before, but now it is. This is Silas and Maddie's homemade ice cream, and it's been here since 1997, but this building was built in 1909, and this is a very, very popular place today to get some ice cream because it did get a bit hot, and they have all your regular flavored assorted ice creams, and I ended up getting chocolate almond. Oh my gosh, you guys, we have seen so much this week and we ended with ice cream and it's melting. Thanks for sticking around until the end. And as normal, I will see you guys next week for another adventure. Bye now.